the reason I felt that she was a bit of a mystery to most people in India, despite the fact that she received the Dada Saab Falke Award, she got the Padma Shri, she was like very well known for her work, considered one of the most beautiful women in Indian cinema, not much was actually known about her. <laughs> Kishwar intersperses every chapter with a letter that uh, Devika writes to Svetislav Rurik. Uh, but, you know, we'll come to that. But tell us a little bit about why you did this. Although Svetislav Rurik is, is a much later part of her life, and while, you know, you've talked about this almost as an afterthought, because the book is really about Devika's life, but why did you intersperse these letters to Svetislav with her life that she that she leads before him and with Himanshu? Uh, so first off, let me just tell you, Devika was a woman who right from an early age was extremely attractive to men of all kinds, you know. And so her li in her life, many men came, and I think there are a few, like Vajahat Sahab in the audience, who also called me up and said, you know, one of my uncles was involved with her. So I got many such phone calls during the course of this book. Many men were, uh, you know, interested in her. She was a beautiful woman. She was also a modern woman. She was a film actress. And uh, uh, at the end of her career in cinema, she was also a very wealthy woman in her own right, because she had managed to reach the top of her career. Um, the reason I interspersed uh, these letters from Svetasab, it's very interesting. The reason I felt that she was a bit of a mystery to most people in India, despite the fact that she received the Dada Saab Falke Award, she got the Padma Shri, she was like very well known for her work, considered one of the most beautiful women in Indian cinema, not much was actually known about her. So when I started my research, I, I realized, which is about 15 years ago, I realized that- 15 years ago. 15 years ago, I have been sort of, you know, on her case for 15 years, trying to, trying to uncover this woman, you know, like who was she really? So what I found was that the only person she revealed her true nature, she was a very private person, were in these letters that she wrote to Svetoslav. These letters were written in 1940. 45. My book starts much earlier, you know, it starts in the 1920s. But in that she explains her career, what she was when she came into cinema, what she became, which she hated, the person that she had become. This is very interesting because she said that, you know, I have become very hardened and so on. And she was also a victim of domestic abuse. She used to be beaten up by Himanshu Rai. And, you know, these were things that I discovered only when I started reading these letters. And these letters were an eye opener for me because, you know, Himanshu and she have always presented a very golden image of this uh, actress and the uh, the perfect, the, the, couple. the perfect couple. He was very good looking. She was so beautiful. And, you know, everything was fine. But she was a very private person. And it wasn't until I started reading these letters that I realized that he used to abuse her and abuse her quite terribly because at times he would take a script, a, a, a thick script, and hit her and hit her with it she, she, till she sort of crumbled, fell bleeding on the ground, fainted, and then would be, you know, um, be given treatment, and then she would go back. But she did not speak a word. This was Devika. She made herself strong, and that's what she says. So those letters were important to intersperse because then people could understand that she says to Swetha love, that I am not the girl who entered into cinema, but the fact that I was abused, the fact that I'm so scarred now, that I was traumatized, was very important for me because it has made me the strong person that I am today. And I can face up to everything. And so she carved out her own path. She decided because of this abuse, this was a very important turning point for her, even though nobody, even her mother didn't know about it, only fleetingly she would occasionally write to her. So. In these letters, I also discovered the fact that how difficult it was for Indian women in those days who wrote frankly, even from her background, where she is the great grandniece of Rabindranath Tagore. She's the first really, uh, you know, somebody who's sophisticated, who could deal with any European at the same level 
almost everybody who came into her life fell in love with her. And yet, she had this uh, terrible secret that she kept to herself. And even the trauma that she faced when uh, she was in front of the cameras, for example, this is the first time I realized how difficult it must have been for women uh, during uh, their menstruation. Because she talks about that very frankly to Svetoslav, that how once she had her periods and she is bleeding. She is bleeding so much and she has to dance. There is a particular scene in the film. And she dances and dances for about 10 or 12 days while the film is being, that, while that scene is being done. And she comes back and she faints because, you know, she is just bled so much. So it was something which made me kind of realize that those days, a, it was difficult to women of all categories. Then, of course, the fact that she came from this particular background, she could connect with Svetoslav. Mm. So they talked to each other as, as an equal, because she also comes from a very re, you know, reputed family, as does he. If you've enjoyed the conversation that you just heard, do subscribe to our channel for much more.